So, it's another Charity Tuesday. I am making another video for you all. Again, I'm going to... Ugh, I feel out of breath, I've just run upstairs. I'm going to make a video about my experience um, and what I've been through and what happened to me, basically. Um, there is a sort of overview video over like a few months back and um, I've decided to sort of break it down into a few more steps and give a bit more detail on how I felt at those specific times. So I've talked about um, the disclosure, disclosure, I hate, I don't know, I don't, that word makes me feel weird, I don't know what it is. Um, and now I'm going to talk about my police experience because I feel like that is a massive step in the whole abuse thing, like going to the police is a massive step. It's when it all stops being such a big secret. Um, I talk very matter-of-factly about it and I make some really bad jokes about my abuse because it's one of the ways I deal with it. Yeah, my counsel wasn't very impressed with some of my jokes, but there we go. I'm going to talk about my police experience. Now, for me, the, the whole stage of going to the police was, it was the first step into ACK acknowledging, really, that it was something actually really bad that happened to me. If you hear a bell before we go any further, there's a the cat is sat right by me and I'm interrupting his nap. After I told my parents, um, very late on in a day, it was like about, it was quite late in the evening, they asked me what I wanted to do about it. And I knew that before I told them, I always knew that once I got to the point where I could tell them, that's when I would be ready to go to the police. I knew, I just knew that that would be the case. And that hadn't changed when I told them. I knew what my gut instinct was, I have to go to the police and I have to report this and I have to sort of get the ball moving in that respect. So I have, I did, I did that. I, I went to the police and I, my mum and dad were like, are you sure that's what you want to do? So the next day, the three of us pile in the car. They didn't need all five of us, me and my brother and my sister as well to go. They just needed me, my mum and dad. We went up to the first police station which was closer, I think. Yeah, it was closer to my house. And um, we went up there and uh, it was closed, <laughs> which was really annoying because, well, you can't really report anything if there's no police officer to report it to. So then I'd built myself up. I was ready. We pulled up to the police station. I was ready. And then we were like, hmm, there's nobody here. So back in the car we went. Off we go um, to the main police station in town. And... Um, as we were walking across from the car park to it, I, I was bricking it. Like, I literally, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know how they would treat me. I, I just didn't know. Like, you just don't know what's going to happen. We got in there, and my dad went up to the receptionist lady, and um, <laughs> I think that's what you call them, and he said, my daughter needs to report something. Um, it's quite serious, and she needs to speak to a police officer about it. And the lady, like, obviously she was following her, like, protocol or whatever, and said, she just needs to go through there, and on those phones by there, she can um, ring it in, and then somebody will call her back, and we'll be able to discuss it with her. And my dad was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. She needs to speak to somebody, like, now. We waited, like, a good, like, half an hour, I think it was, for the police officer to come down, because obviously they were busy doing other things. There was other things going on. It doesn't just happen to me. Um, I'm one of many people that this happens to and obviously those cases that were being reported to them, you know, all the time. He came down, we went into um, this little room and it was like, it was really small and there was four of us in there. So it was a good job my brother and my sister didn't come really because that would have been very cramped. Um, we were sat in there, we gave all the details of my abuser. He asked me a few questions, like sort of the extent of it, what, what it was about, um, what what sort of abuse it was. And the first, that was the first time I think I ever said the words, I have been abused. Like, I think that was the first time like, I really used that and actually knew the severity of what I was saying and the consequences of what had happened to me. And I think it was the first time when all of it became, like, real. Like, before, because it was just me dealing with it and there was nobody else involved except, obviously, my abuser. Like, that's when, for me, it was okay this is happening this this is something that needs that is being dealt with like right now and all of a sudden I'm starting to process all these feelings and emotions and 
it all sort of slots into place in my mind. Um, I cried a lot. My mum cried a bit. My dad, my good old dad, he um, he was asking all the important questions of like, so what happens next? Like, what what's the sort of situation now? I also told the officer like, actually, um, by the way, I'm actually going back to Bournemouth for uni in two weeks' time. I'm sure it was two or three weeks or something ridiculous like that. It wasn't long. And they were like, okay, we we can deal with that. So um, once we'd done all the sort of initial sort of setting the overall story, we then left that police station. Um, he was great. He proper like believed what I was saying. You know, he understood what severity. Obviously, this is what he deals with as his job. Then um, we left. We actually went to KFC and my mum and dad obviously they still wanted to talk about it. So that. That, and we we did talk about it a bit like it was something that had to be spoken about like it was it was real like um and for them it was very new whereas for me i've been dealing with it for 13 years so it wasn't new to me but for everybody else it was new it was really weird um i messaged like the people that knew about it and sort of said to them like i've just been to the police station and they were like what <laughs> really and i was like yeah just been and done it it's it's happened now then after that it was like within a couple of days, it wasn't very long, I went for my police interview. My like proper video interview. And like that's like, it's like in a, a it's like a living room. It's like you've got a couple of sofas, a coffee table, um, and then there's cameras and microphones all over. And that's when I went into like real depth of what happened. And obviously that he was, it was just me and the other police officer, there wasn't anybody else in the room. And it, he was, with that he was obviously digging for more information. Like he was like drawing the information out of me because I wasn't really like giving the information, I was, I was still doing the outline side of it but he needed specific details and that that took a, a while, it took two and a half hours for the initial video interview that I did and after that I went back to uni and then it was a little while and then the police officer came down to Bournemouth and interviewed and took statements from all the people I disclosed to at uni that was over two days, two days. So it, it took quite a while to sort of gather everything up to build my case. Um, I then, I sort of left out something from my initial video interview that I wasn't ready to speak about yet. So I, my friends had sort of told them that, um, which obviously they had to. And then I had to make another video interview about it, which that one was tougher than the first one. So we, I had to tell my parents obviously that there was actually something more to the whole thing. In that time, there was quite a sort. There was a period when it was quite quiet. I didn't really hear anything from the police. It sort of felt like it was being dragged out. Obviously, they just had a lot of stuff to do. But also. My police officer, my original one, got taken off of my case and I was given another one. So she then had to have some time to get up to speed with what was happening with my case and sort of obviously read up on it. And then we arranged for my second police interview. So I went back up to Cambridge, like literally, I think I was only there for like a day or something ridiculous. We were like flying visit there and back. Basically, I'd left out the part that I had actually been raped. Um, and then I had to go into, obviously, that was the most exhausting part of like the whole investigation like in terms of like draining because it takes a lot out of you to like give all that sort of stuff and you're like there's like a barrier on like telling all this stuff and like just trying to break through it but it's really difficult because it was a secret like it wasn't something I ever told anybody and then all of a sudden I had to tell all these details and I didn't want to tell them but I had to because I knew I had to. Left Cambridge again came back and we waited a while they attempted to arrest him one time and I don't know what happened. I can't remember what happened, but for some reason that first time it didn't happen. So then they they told me, like, basically that when it was going to happen. So the second time I arranged to go to Longleat Safari Park because I just wanted to keep busy. I didn't want to, I didn't want to have to think about it. And um, then we went, so I was up there. It was about three o'clock in the afternoon. I got the phone call from my the person in charge of my case. And we're like, he's been arrested. He's in custody at the moment and that was weird like to know that they actually were talking to him about it. They'd interviewed him, he'd answered no comment to every single question including am I his niece? 
like to me that's not a no comment question that's a yes or a no question like but there we go um obviously i had this i i knew he was gonna i knew he wasn't gonna admit it but there's that tiny little piece of hope in you that you know he would have some sort of conscience and decide that actually yes i will be a normal human being for two seconds and actually admit it there we go that didn't happen so then he got released on bail he was told he wasn't allowed to contact me there was i think there were some other conditions to his bail but i don't really i can't really remember them and then it was literally about a week or so later it wasn't very long um and i was getting ready to go to work in bournemouth my mum rang me uh while i was getting ready for work and she told me she basically she asked me you are you on your own and i was like no and i just said to her he's done it hasn't he and she said yeah he's dead and that was the most it was just the weirdest feeling and i cannot describe that feeling except a mixture of 101 different emotions all at once like just and i just i just cried i just cried i just there was no other way to release this emotion than crying like literally i just cried i was lucky i wasn't on my own and I had somebody else there that could sort of take over the phone call from my mum. And um, they were like, what do you want to do? I was like, I want to come up. I'm going to come up to Cambridge. I don't want to hear anything else second hand. I just want to be there. Plus, everybody's going to start finding out what has been going on over the last year. And yes, it did take almost a year for, it was pretty much like nine months. Um, this, this had all spanned over. And I went back up to Cambridge people found out about what had happened, people felt guilty, people felt horrible, Pe you know, people felt sorry for me and my constant thing was the whole way through, please don't treat me any differently to what you do now. And that, that was just the way I treated it, like I'm still the same person, I'm no different to what you thought I was before, it's just you didn't know this thing. And it was hard trying to deal with his death, um, that was a massive, massive topic in my counselling. But that was it. Once he had killed himself, he couldn't be prosecuted. So my case got closed. Which was frustrating. It felt like I hadn't done... I hadn't done... You know, I'd done all this stuff and it went nowhere. It just came to an end <laughs> but at the same time I was really appreciative of the fact that the two police officers made me feel at ease to tell them everything like the first time like that was me not wanting to say anything and um, there were certain parts of my police experience that could have been better and could have been handled better but at the same time like that's life, that's the way things go. But I am I am glad that I went to the police about it because if I didn't, I would be kicking myself now because I knew, like, I was ready to go to the police. I was ready to go forward. And that's the whole thing. Like, that's the thing that will probably maintain through all these videos where I talk about my experience of what happened for me and how, like, I've coped with it since, blah, blah, blah. Is everything I've done was right for me at the time that I did it I was not pushed into doing it I wasn't being told I have to do it now it was everything was on my terms like everything was based around me and that was the thing that I was most grateful for with the police was they hurried up my first police interview my video interview so that I could do it before I went back to Bournemouth like they they said like we don't want to disrupt your life any more than what it's already been and that for me made me know that I was being supported and I was be I was believed. Like I didn't feel at any time that I wasn't believed, which was so important in me feeling comfortable in telling them what happened. So in all in all, I had a pretty good experience and there are people out there who haven't had a very good experience with the police. And that I think that would be really, really hard to deal with afterwards. So my next i've got like a list of like breakdown of topics so i have got another video plan for next week talk about my experience again if anybody's got any questions or people want to know specific things about it or anything like that i am open to talking about it because i am ridiculously open about it 
like so ridiculously open about my experience and what happened to me there are certain things I will not talk about but then if you don't ask you'll never know if I will or won't talk about it part of the reason why I am running the London Marathon is because of my experience and because I want to help other people who are going through something similar get the support that they need and that for me is the most important part is I've been through it and I just do not want anybody else to go through it like at all I just wouldn't want anybody else to go through what I've been through and I know people will so if I can help those people in any way that would be great and I know that by running the marathon I can help in like the smallest way because that money will go to good use so if you do want to donate and sponsor me please do I am writing a lot of blog posts at the moment I'm getting back into doing my blog so you can see more of like what I'm getting up to I have had a struggle this last week with the gym but I like training and stuff but I am getting proper into it again this week I was ill last week I just I was dying I'm 100% sure I had man flu and I now understand what the term man flu is because I definitely had it. I, I was not doing anything, like trust me, my room was a tip and yeah, I was miserable and I wasn't very nice to be around last week so very best I didn't go to the gym and spread it to everybody in the world because that would have been unpleasant. So if you want to see more of these videos, if you want to see more of the videos that I'm making, I've got a few more planned for this week. and. I will catch you next time remember to like give it a thumbs up comment if you've got something you want to say um, and subscribe I'll see you next time